it's a question too because he's not going on Mario. <laughs> he's actually going Rosalina. Oh wow, that is actually very unexpected. He yeah. won Rosalina here from the very first game. So the buzz has to have a very specific strategy going in. Right. I'm seeing a pattern here too. I think it goes Rosalina game one and based on that performance goes for the all or nothing pick with uh with Olimar, as we saw him do against Ally, where it would played off amazingly on stages like FD, but then seemed to falter when he got counterpicked to his own stage. Imagine his angle was that the way people have to play against Rosalina is a bad way if they adapt to then playing against Olimar. That would be a uh, big brain play. That will absolutely be, right? Big brain play from the buzz. I wouldn't hold it against him. Blue Tony trying to adapt. I don't think many people play Rosalina in general anymore, so this might be a matchup that he's not too practiced in. Whereas uh, I'm sure DeBuzz plays his fair share of Wario's, especially Rosalina. Yeah, he's definitely had experience at least playing against Tweak's Wario. So that is a good place to start. Okay, Luma getting a, being the brave one out of the two in the middle stage. I do like how he pushes out Luma and tries to get in because Wario's hitboxes can be very deceiving. DeBuzz looking for neutral air into upper, trying to get a stock up from this interaction. He absorbs the bike there to throw at least, uh, throw him Ooh. up. Using the bike, almost under the forward smash too as a result. And the jab, getting involved with both the bike and Wario's shield. Not a single percent taken though. Glutoni has to be careful at 145. That definitely made the hitbox all sorts of janky. And the WAF is gonna do it. Interesting use to use it right there, but honestly, it got you the kill, can't complain. That was a massive read though. He was very confident there sitting right next to his shield. Looking for the up smash, of course, that range will go through that side platform here in Pokemon Stadium. A look at the buzz putting the Luma on the platform there to catch, to catch him jumping. Yeah, the, 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 of course, the way the game is programmed, you, you get the advantage by killing Luma first and going after Rosalina. That's kind of the way this character was designed. But in some cases, especially if you have a character like Wario, you can sort of get right onto Rosa's body, get an opening there for a quick combo. The buzz equaling it out with his own down air. Almost 200% though, He's making it dying. really hard for the buzz to get anything going. Yeah, Gluton has been dying at really high percent as of late. His DI and his way this character is actually really, really good. He's also just really good at specifically avoiding kill moves. Like every time the buzz has been going for neutral or upper setup, he can just never quite can get it. Right, and I like seeing the fact that uh, Rosalina's weight and her floatiness sort of makes her air dodge almost like a third jump. Okay, let's see. Going for down it right here to try catch the rising up B. Barely missed. It seems that the buzz, the buzz has really good spacing and good options and awareness, but it's almost like Rosalina is not fast enough in these situations to deal with Wario's moves. Trying to pressure with the bike, that would have been a kill though. Okay, using two dash attacks, two quick ones to get rid of Luma. That was quite the inefficient removal of Luma yeah. though. That took a while. The uh, buzz was definitely a little bit afraid of punishing that. Like a surgeon zero. Waiting here. Ooh, nice pivot grab. Scooping him up with a dash attack. Well, the downer, that was pretty dangerous. If you get caught by downer, not only can you die from the downer itself, but you can also get combo if he fast moves right after. All right. Now, Loom, now, I like how he's putting Luma and Wario between her, herself and Luma. The bite, the last little bit of it hitting, and I swear he might have been 2% away from dying right there. But now with he was him. absolutely afraid of Luma. He tried to hit Luma, but then Luma was swinging the smash attacks, and that looked a little scary. So very wise not to mess with that. And actually, I love that using Luma to distract Wario on the ledge and trying to get back with this bite will result in a kill. Glutoni taking the lead in game one. Using bite as a mix-up is so good, though, because most people will just expect the down or the upper or even a neutral there, but then he punishes that bite going for the bite as a mix-up. Using the bike throwing it at the buzz who, who trades with an up smash blue and he barely not dying but he will take it there dead even here the buzz finding his footing a little better the buzz was some incredible reaction there he up smashed after the very first hit of neutral not the second one we're seeing blue now stay under the platform he wants to find an opening a little more patient play right here trying not rush it too much that is it great nair into waff one of the most classic confirmed his character has and just like that it went from even to very not even almost instantaneously I feel like one of the things that makes Wario so good is the fact that you have to deal with multiple wafts throughout a match. Back in Smash 4, Wario only really had two stocks to play with, so sometimes he would only get one waft per match. Now this time around, at the very least, you have to deal with two wafts. It really is daunting to see what difference it makes by having a rule set of two stocks versus three stocks. You have so much more to play with, so much more options and risks that you can take. 
and the games can last considerably longer as a result. Yeah, one whole stop makes a big difference, especially for aggressive players. They can just go off the level a little bit more, take a couple more risks, maybe go for more counter picks. Are we going to see the, the, the gamble pick? And, or, as a reminder, this is losers now. Might be either DeBuzz's last game here or Glutoni's last set. All the sides for this game right here. Yeah, he's going to go Olimar as we talked before. If Rosalina does not work game one, then we're going to be seeing Olimar. Now, I really like the idea of going for Final Destination here. It's going to be really hard for Wario to land on stage without getting a pivot grab or at least getting a couple of pigments on his presence. So that's going to do a lot of damage here. You know how Ally was using Snake's down tilt to get rid of the Olimar attached to him? I wonder what Glutoni's answer is to that. Does he use his own down tilt? Is there, is there any move that really can do that for, for Wario in neutral? I feel like neutral is pretty good, really safe, and you can use it while retreating. Hits twice and, also, yeah. Right, yeah, and it covers a big portion of his body. You can also go for up tilt or for down tilt. And you can approach with it, but it doesn't matter when you're getting down there. That was actually an unscathed Olimar. The buzz is incredibly at zero, or was rather, at zero percent the entire first talk. Will this be a second occasion of the buzz losing with Rosalina, but then immediately destroy it with Olimar? Uh, I would not have any doubt in my mind, Zero, because right now it's looking like this is looking like pre-patch Olimar once again. 69-2 stock, the buzz running away with game two. We pretty much only said two things then. Wario's already at 90%. Yeah, I, I blinked and uh, this is already... Okay, good dash attack from Glutoni. It's finding the kill here because DeBuzz is so good at using that uppy to snap to the ledge, but delaying it just a little bit too. It's not always obvious when he's going to use it. I feel like at this point you need to go for some hardcore edge guards off the level. You need to make some sort of play because he's falling behind really quick here. And before he knows it, a blue grab will steal the deal. Yeah, if, if you're a warrior right now, you need to do some, some parkour or something. Mixing up the jumps, maybe go for a big sma forward smash play. Bite will not quite kill, but Olimar is one of the lightest characters in this game. So a few more of those might kill. Great tech to answer that forward air. And a nice down tilt to dash tech. Lutoni actually equalizing the set, or the match rather, but at 150, was it enough for him to mitigate a lead right here? Can he find the waft? Ooh, up smash out of shield will do it for the buzz. That was quite the incredible reaction time too. The buzz waited at the exact time where Warrior was falling at the right plays and then goes for the up smash. It wasn't just doing it immediately as it could, but it was waiting at the right time. Yep. And Waft is on deck. Comebacks are very, very possible. For if, if, if any character can do a comeback, it's Wario. Yeah, if I was the buzz right hit, I would be very afraid of a Waft setup. Up tilt and neutral are both of the things that he's looking for. As you can see, he's double jumping over the buzz to try to find this neutral falling hitbox so that he can get at least a walk up. It also works. And then the buzz is working. He's anti aerial magic. That's why you see him up smashing, retreating, and moving up, obviously pretty far away from Mario. He's pretty much running away at this point. And it's so clever how the buzz uses that last little bit of air time, that hang time when he jumps to use that back air. A lot of players let their shield down. As we saw right there, got Gluten into come up from 70 to now 110. And the up air from the purple. Pikmin will do it and zero. It's a story we've told over and over again. Game three again. I feel like players definitely at this point have to start figuring out the bans against the buzz because it's clear to me that he's using two characters are in top eight. Seems most players are banning all, only on the first character that he's using, like maybe a ban against Rosalina, but not right. a ban against uh, Olimar. The buzz able to get away with FD Olimar twice during this top eight. And I believe, you know, it, it really is uh, FD Olimar, which seems to be paying, yes. him, like, by far, giving him the most real estate. So getting rid of that would make me curious as to where he takes his opponents, and if it even works that well. At this point, both players talking about bans, counter picks, deciding on the next stage for this game three, elimination game as well, everything riding for both players. This is, this could be uh, the last uh, match for France in the tournament, last match for DeBuzz as well. Same characters, no switching here. No surprise. Now where have they gone? Where has Glutoni decided to take this notorious Olimar? Town and city, wants some more room. Gonna do his best to use the platforms to avoid all the Pikmin debuzz throws. Yeah, I mean, like I said, Town and city seems like a good pick here. You have good ground uh, space, at least to move around, but then the, you have the platform so you, you can dodge the Pikmin. It makes it a lot harder for you to get hit by picking if you at least have these platforms to avoid them. Every time Gluten hits an up tilt, I always get so nervous for the opponent because he can find so much off of that. Every time he trades an aerial, the buzz is happy to come down with a fair, usually for, for Pearl Pikmin too. He has it loaded up, down tilt, dash attack. The buzz not really getting less by any capacity here. Yeah. Immediately jumping up the pressure. 
In fact, we haven't really seen too much less pressure in this game. It's been all about neutral and just juggles. Yeah, he's happy to stay and wait for Blue 20 to come towards him. Going way deep with that bike. Might have been a mistake. Down tilt. No bike as yet. And that's not going to be a stock because Blue Tony with a great tech. Barely staying alive here. 132. Down tilt dash tech with the sour spot. Sour spot absolutely saving the buzz. Double sour spot. Ooh, deep back air. Whoa, how low can you go? That is going to be a problem the next time, the next time that the buzz has to be off the level. Okay. He will probably run out of the timer for the up beam. He just might. Down air, not going to kill him quite yet, but definitely juggles him just a bit. The basketball dribble. Ooh, the, whipping the back air. The buzz did lose his blue Pikmin during that interaction, so now he's not going to be able to get an easy grab into a kill. He is looking for that blue Pikmin, and now he has it. I'm surprised neither player <laughs> has lost a stock yet. How is that possible given these two characters? Oh, an up smash out of shield to punish the greedy dash attack. Yeah, and the buzz throwing the blue Pikmin off the level, he realizes that once he gets that grab kill, he does no longer need it and preferred the two purples back in. Now he's going for the blue grab here, probably because of the purple is kind of hard to farm. Right. It actually is pretty common for all of my players to farm purples during the match. As you can see, Olimar picked up his first purple of this stock. Now he's going to keep it around. Actually, I just realized how quickly one clap can get rid of the Pikmin. That seems to be the pick for him. Yeah, and he decided to kill that purple immediately. The, oh, yeah. the moment the purple landed in front of him, he was definitely down tilted there repeatedly. He wanted to get rid of that purple. He said, nope. Yeah, it makes it very annoying to fight Olimar neutral here. Wow, that second hit of the Nair to Buzz instantly up smashed out of shield and found a 40% combo out of it. He's making Gluten a little, little aggravated here. He's going in a little harder. A parry, second hit of Nair. I see that waft, it's fully charged. Okay, down tilt to open it, avoiding that up smash himself. Fair to come down. Yeah, the buzz absolutely making it incredibly difficult here to deal with the purple picking. The purple picking did fly off the level though. Okay, the buzz a bit greedy on his own dash attack there. Might have been the right call, looking for maybe a pop up into a, another smash attack. Using the bike completely offensively here and jump it, using it to at least hit the yeah. buzz with any kind of aerial here. Blutony's plan seems to be to fight him as deep off stage as he wants. I think that's a really good strategy. Olimar is very vulnerable off the level. Yeah, I, I do think Luton is not going to use that waft. He's going to save it until the very end. Going to try to find a kill here maybe with a back air. Yep, a back air, maybe even a, a dash attack. Oh, side to would have killed it. Missed the buzz. Whiffing or taking advantage of that whiff. Now with the lead here, living off that dash attack. I feel like Olimar's short frame definitely helped dodge that back air. That rising back air was a little too high. Okay, he ate one of the Pikmin. Not going to recover much at 0%. <laughs> Buzz. Choosing to go to the other ledge, yep. so at least he can get away from ledge pressure here. Get away from the stoop kid. Up air. Two jabs into an up smash. He Could actually baited the spot dodge there because uh, he expected the grab, but then he waited for it and then got the up smash. Could have been a big combo starter, but Blue got out of the way. Still is at 59. Needs to get rid of this stock or else the Buzz might run away with the set. And as you can see, the damage from Blue Pikmin is insane. Oh, the WAP is on here, ladies and gentlemen. Last stock. Wario fully charged waft. Olimar 0%. Who will take this? Who will enter our top four? See, this looks really good for the buzz, but then I'm also thinking that he might just die <gasps> with one hit, and I'm really afraid right now because it is a game three scenario last stock. I'm nervous, zero. Up out of shield, still not gonna do it. 130 for gluttony. The buzz is trying to stay as safe as possible. The blue he knows Pikmin. one misstep could cost him the set. Oh and the my god, that oh he comes back down. He's patient. Oh! oh! And the buzz. Great awareness. Clutching it out. Immediate get up off the stage. Honestly, beautifully played from both players. Gluttony looked like at any second was going to let the waft rip. But it was one second too late. The buzz found the opening, calculated it, executed, and now is finding himself in loser semis of the bracket.